all have experienced either directly in ourselves or with someone that we love, that memory tends to decline as we get older. And this can occur even in the absence of Alzheimer's disease or another dementia. There's kind of a lifespan trajectory at which our memory changes in the later stages of life. So broadly, my research is interested in understanding why that occurs. We still haven't been able to answer that question, but then also when we understand the why, trying to develop treatments that can make individuals resilient to that memory loss as we age. With normal cognitive aging, we know that there are very kind of subtle changes that occur in the brain. So one thing that's important for cognition is how our brain cells or our neurons talk to each other. And that communication between neurons can kind of deteriorate even without any sort of underlying disease process happening. The other thing that we know is our neurons, our brain cells, need a lot of energy. So when we are consuming food to make up energy for our bodies, even though our brain's only two to three percent of our body weight, it consumes 20 percent of our energy or our metabolic resources. And that's something that an older brain isn't very efficient at using. So that's another thing that can change with age. Now, when you add pathology on top of that, all those changes are also occurring, which can make the brain more vulnerable to a pathology. But then on top of that, there's other disease processes that are occurring that can exacerbate the metabolic you know, aspect, as well as making it so it's harder for the brain to get rid of kind of waste and junk that's also part of the normal brain process. And so that can lead to some of these pathological markers adding up in the brain that's gonna further interfere with the ability of our neurons to talk to each other. We do a lot of work looking at diet and how diet can influence how your brain ages. And in one way, we like to think of trying to make a brain that's resilient. So just like the rest of your body, as you get older, there's wear and tear that accumulates and that can you know, cause damage or cause our organ systems to not work as effectively. And what we want to think about doing is building a brain that's resilient to those normal kind of wear and tear aspects that accumulate over a lifetime. The aged brain isn't very effective at using glucose. So our body, when we consume food, kind of the primary currency that we use to make energy is glucose and carbohydrates. Now, a lot of things can happen metabolically as we get older that make it difficult um, to use glucose efficiently. So one of them is type two diabetes and that our insulin receptors become less sensitive. And so they're not as good at telling the cells in our body to use glucose to make energy. And that's something that really our brain is very susceptible to. And so we're looking at ways at which we can kind of bypass that glucose system to provide our brains with the energy that it needs to um, function optimally. When we exercise a lot or when we have long periods of fasting, we can actually use fats from, from that we store in our bodies to produce energy. And the ability to use fat to make energy is something that the aged brain is very able to do. And so we're trying to leverage that to see if we can bypass kind of an impaired glucose insulin system and provide the brain with a better energy substrate um, when it's older. Um, so that could be done through fasting, for example, or exercise, but it can also be done by eating a diet at which you restrict carbohydrate intake and try and substitute that um, energy with a nice healthy fat source. And one thing we also know is that not all fats are created equally. So when you get a lot of animal fat, that's a long chain triglyceride and that your body can use to make energy. We rely on our liver very much to kind of take those long chain triglycerides and convert it into something that our other organ systems can use to make energy. But there are other fat sources called medium chain triglycerides and medium chain triglycerides um, can be found in coconut oil. Um, you can also you know, buy them um, as a dietary supplement and medium chain triglycerides are very easy for our liver to convert into what we call ketone bodies. And ketone bodies are then a nice substitute um, for glucose into going into the um, biochemical pathways that then can make ATP, which is our primary 
energy currency. If you eat a diet at which you can get um, you know, medium chain triglycerides and you have low carbohydrate intake, then you can provide energy substrates that the aged brain seems to be able to deal with um, and use effectively. If an individual has metabolic dysfunction, so we're talking about a scenario at which someone's fasting glucose is high, their fasting insulin levels are high, things that your primary care physician would look for at your annual checkup. And if you have those early signs of metabolic dysfunction that also include a lot of accumulation of visceral fat or abdominal fat, um, then that's a sign of metabolic dysfunction. And a lot of diets can kind of reverse that. So, and that includes like a paleo diet or another one that's received a lot of attention is the Mediterranean diet because those diets tend to lower fasting insulin and glucose. And so they're gonna make your insulin receptors more sensitive and those can be beneficial. But the way that they're beneficial is because they're restoring something that is deficient. Now, a ketogenic diet, I think, does those things as well, but I think there's also an additive effect because when you provide the brain with ketone bodies, that seems to normalize some of the things that become dysfunctional. One of the things we know that our brain needs to do to function normally is balance excitation, so cells in our brain saying go, versus inhibition, so cells in our brain that are putting the brakes on. And if there's a disruption in the go signal and the no-go signal, that can cause problems. One that's probably the most well-known is epilepsy. Epilepsy is a disorder at which you have too much go and not proper inhibition. And one of the things that happens in the aging brain, and this is even without pathology, is there's a disruption in that balance between excitation and inhibition between some of our brain regions. The ketogenic diet, and we don't know why, but for mechanisms we're still investigating, is able to kind of turn up that no-go signal to restore that balance. And so this is something that it, it appears to be doing beyond some of other, the other diets like Mediterranean diets um, and paleo diets um, by providing more breaks, if you will, so that the brain can function more optimally. The ketogenic diet has been used for almost 100 years to treat epilepsy. So um, prior to the use of pharmacological interventions that could stop people from having seizures, a ketogenic diet was effective. The data have been pretty solid on the fact that caloric restriction doesn't really seem to help cognition. Um, it certainly can extend longevity, and that's been shown in a number of animal models, um, but it doesn't appear to really improve cognitive function. Now, intermittent fasting, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, there might be some beneficial effects, but in a lot of the work that I've done, um, many of our subjects are intermittently fasted and we still see some sort of cognitive decline. So I don't think that in itself is enough, but what intermittent fasting does do very effectively is it does make the insulin receptor more sensitive. So intermittent fasting by itself can kind of reset some of the metabolic dysfunction that happens as, um, as we get older. And it's gonna be very good at restoring when there is some sort of underlying dysfunction that's going to be helpful to the brain, but I think there's probably more things we could do on top of intermittent fasting that are really going to make the older brain resilient to um, memory loss and cognitive decline. What I would love to be able to do at, in my career is be able to provide individuals with a playbook for how to age healthy and something that's really driven by data that we can point and say, you know, if you eat in this way and have these kind of lifestyle factors, the chances of you aging with all your cognitive faculties intact are much higher than if you don't do these things.